Hello and welcome to an entirely new series. This is based on RotaryCraft, or the, the mod RotaryCraft. Um, yeah, so let's get started, shall we? This is going to be just like my mechanism tutorial. It's going to be centering around RotaryCraft itself. There are other mods that are in this pack, and let me just go through the pack first of all in a second. But RotoCraft is the main focus here. Wherever possible, though, I'll try and use its sister mods, which I'll come into shortly. I'll come on to shortly, even. Um, just to keep everything quite thematically, you know, correct and stuff like that. Just as I have done with Mechanism. So, first of all, what mod pack am I using? Well, there's a few that you can use with RotaryCraft. Let me go through them. Uh, if you are still on Minecraft 1.6 or you still want to use 1.6, there is FTP Monster. I have a previous series on that that you may be interested in, which, on which I did do some RotoCraft, but not to the extent that this series will actually cover. If you're on 1.7, there's a few on there as well. We've got on FTB, a uh, third party pack. You need to use the code Reika, that's R E I K A, that's the author of the mod. And you will get access to uh, a Reika pack there. Quite a pretty tree there. Almost needs a Christmas tree decoration. We're getting close to December. You can also um, get other packs. This one that I'm currently using is on the AT launcher uh, system, and it's called Revolution. Again, yeah, same same kind of thing, same kind of deal. You don't have to worry too much about which pack you're on. And of course, you can always add it to your own pack if you want to. And I've just started in this uh, auto-generated tower. I haven't built this personally. I'm not this good at building. And this this should do us to at least get started. Um, like my other tutorials, just to briefly explain, the way I play these is I'm not going to run up and down a line of chests and explain every single engine and bore you absolutely stupid by doing so. I'm going to play this as a very much like a mini progression series, except only in one mod. So you'll only see bits of the progression if you like. So th this first episode is really, you should have started, you should have got, you know, some resources, got some iron here. We've got a smeltery going, which here in this particular pack is the, the way to get started with tools that I then have to unlock to actually get decent stuff. In this case, we're using Iguana Tweaks, so I have to get the tools before I can really start on um, Rotorycraft. Mention the sister mods, by the way. The other mods are in here, pretty much all of Raker's mods are in here, but the sister mods that you need to be aware of more than anything else is usually Electrocraft, and you'll see on the right-hand side there isn't a whole bunch of actual items in Electrocraft. It's small, it's intended to support um, Rotary Craft. There is a couple of extra things like induction motors, um, mainly the pipings, the wire systems for transmitting the power. The other one is uh, <laughs> a little bit larger and probably not something I'm going to cover in this tutorial series itself, I mean, not this playlist. It's called Reactor Craft, and that's. Uh, has a bunch of things that are infamous. In particular, the fusion reactor is infamous, so that is a much larger build than, than typical. Most people don't actually get to it because it's just that large, uh, somewhat similar to, I guess, the reactor system in uh, Mechanism that I covered. So let's get started with Rotary Craft, and because I have Figuana Tweaks, I'm short of Redstone. I don't think I've found any yet. However, what I did do was find the handbook. Now, if you don't have the handbook, you can craft it when you get to Redstone, of course, which I don't have yet. And the handbook is a fairly simple recipe. And in this case, we want the Roger Graph one. There's one for all three mods. So two pieces of Redstone, one iron and six paper gets you the handbook. And this is quite complete, quite thorough, but not necessarily in a tutorial sense. You know, there's lots of tabs talking about different things and then concepts and then how to farm and all kinds of other things. So we're going to cover this um, first episode with the basics, really. And to start with of the basics for um, Rotary Craft, we're going to need some uh, lava and a few different things. Let me just grab something. One of the first things we need is uh, a blast furnace. Uh, it's not the Railcraft one. It's a specific one for rotary craft. <laughs> and that needs redstone. Yes, I guess I'm going mining. And also some stone bricks. But I'm in a building made out of stone bricks. So that's not too much of an issue. Um, we're also going to need a work table. 
I get that right, or one word, book table. Uh, yeah, there we go. And that also needs redstone. <laughs> so there's no way I'm going to do this without going to get some redstone. So let me go and do that. So now that I've been mining, I've got a few ores, plenty of iron in this mod, uh, and I've got some, more importantly, redstone. So let's just craft those few things up, shall we? Um, one piece of redstone. I don't have much yet, but uh, I should have enough for this with stone bricks around it. And that's it to start with. So let's head down into wherever your cave in the in the uh, <laughs> your cave, your um, hole in the side of a hill, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be my starting area. Uh, so head down here, and first of all, I'm going to put a chest down, and I'm just going to dump my ores in here, at least some of my ores, and other miscellaneous stuff. Uh, just so I don't have to worry about it too much. There we go. Uh, and we're going to need to get some lava now. In this particular mod pack, I have to make the clay bucket um, because it kind of forces me, if I want normal buckets, to get steel plate from Railcraft. And I'm not going to be using other mods really too much. So if necessary, I will cheat stuff in just to get common items. Um, just to start off with, because I'm going to lose the clay bucket, I'm going to need to pick somewhere. Let's just put it, uh, let's say, here. What we actually want to do is put down some lava. There you go. And my bucket disappears. And then put the blast furnace over the top. You'll see at the top of the screen the temperature starts rising. And uh, you see insufficient temperature or invalid or missing items. If I right click on that, you'll see the blast furnace interface. And this is for creating pretty much HSLA steel, <laughs> which is harder to say than you might otherwise think. Uh, ingot, that's the first one. So, yes, you can make it from a steel block, it's somewhat equivalent. You need to fill the left-hand side with sand, coal, and gunpowder. I'm not sure if charcoal works here. That's possible. Uh, and then just fill the actual center with iron. And it will make HSLA steel. If we look at the actual equivalent of the crafting station or the crafting block for this, it's called a work table. You may have seen it briefly. And in order to get going... Oh, wrong one. In order to get going, you require two of this HSLA steel. So we have to get going on the others anyway. Um, and I may not have coal. The one disadvantage of this particular mod pack too is that its world gen is weird. If I'm, I'm used to FTB world gen, so it's fairly predictable. Coal's everywhere and then uh, lapis is near the bottom and stuff like that. Well, lapis is it definitely changed place in this particular mod pack and I think so has coal because I didn't find much how to make charcoal so let's see if charcoal will do if not I'll have to go and get some coal so let's get some sand some gun was it gunpowder uh, yes gunpowder and I want some coal or coal equivalents uh, we have one tree left. Okay, let's see if uh, let's see if charcoal will do, and if not, we'll get some coal. No worries either way. Charcoal. All right. So let's deal with you. And let's just convert you across to wood like this, and we'll leave that to cook up. Uh, do I want anything else? More gunpowder. These gunpowder and sand and, and charcoal, by the way, only have a chance of being used up, if I remember rightly. They're not going to be used up with every operation, so don't think you're going to require huge amounts versus the actual iron you're going to be using up. However, <laughs> the mod does require a lot of iron. Not much of anything else, but a lot of iron, so just do bear that in mind that you may... Ah, I've got some dark wood that I can use to burn up. Uh, in fact, will that turn into wood? Yeah, cool. Uh, I can use that as my source from now onwards. Let's see if this works. Pop downstairs. Into our workshop, or what will be our workshop. So we're going to put sand in the top. Let's just put 20 in for now. Uh, it's gunpowder in the bottom. And let's try charcoal in the middle. 
And we actually need some iron ingots to make this. Let's just grab two. That's all we need for our starting recipe. Let's see, will you convert? Does not look like it. Insufficient temperature, invalid and missing items. So I'm going to need to go and find coal. Uh, but it is up to 370 degrees Celsius. There is a possibility, by the way, that it may use charcoal, just that I'm not at high enough temperature yet. Um, let's have a look. Summons me into the, the book, which is fine. Coal or coke in the left slot. <laughs> it doesn't say whether you can use charcoal, but mm, maybe. I will... No, it's pretty much regulating. I'm going to leave it alone for a while. Let's see if this actually kicks in. I'm not going to do it on camera, obviously. I'm just going to wait uh, just to see whether I need coal or not. All right, we're at 600 degrees now, and it's still not alloying, which is uh, one thing. So let me just try the other way of doing this, which I think we should be able to convert charcoal across into cold coke. And I should have some more cooking upstairs. So let me just grab that while the rest of that's been made. Have to make a full staircase at some point. There we go. And you're probably going to, you know, set a couple of these blast furnaces up. One to make cold coke and the other one to make um, the actual HSLA. So let's put you back in along with gunpowder and sand. Let's try this now. Now, note, the more of this is filled that's filled in the middle, the more chance you have of bonus output over on the right side. So do bear that in mind. It's probably benefit to have at least nine. I've only got seven made up, but that's fine. So here we go. Steel maker. And... Yes, that's pretty good. Let's grab you and let's look at the next stage. Now, before I make the, the next stage, I do want to talk a little bit about what we do in this mod. It allows us to do ore processing. It allows us to get more ores out of uh, more ingots out of our ores, up to five times, I think, just like mechanism, uh, but in a very different way. Uh, it allows us to let me just put this rest of this charcoal in while I'm talking. Uh, it allows us to let's put this in do farming and lots of other different things but one of the main things that people will always want to do is oil processing and always want to get more or more bang for the buck as far as what ingots they get out of it so we do have to in order to get the uh, look at the whole idea of what makes rotary craft rotary craft as opposed to all the other mods and it's the concept of rotational power now an engine in your car or an engine uh, really think of a, an old rail steam engine involves rotary power and in the case of this mod we each well nearly all of the engines I think if I remember rightly operate at a certain power level so let's just look up uh, rotary craft engines shall we let's just have a look it's in the handbook as well but it's it, you know most people use any eye anyway so uh, they are I don't know if I can recognize them uh, the first one is called the DC engine, so maybe I can just search for that one. Oh, no, here they are. See them all here. DC electric engine. And if I hold shift, you'll see three things. One, its power is uh, basically 4,000... Is that one comma? Looks like one comma. Uh, if it is, then that's 1,000 kilowatts. It could be one... Could just be one kilowatt. I don't, can't tell whether that's a comma or a uh, dot. Anyway, 1024. Each of the engines have a certain amount of power. And they deliver that a certain amount of torque and speed. And torque times speed equals power in this case. So if you look at this, 4 times 256 is 1024. Makes sense? Hopefully. So what is torque and speed then? Well, torque is the power the uh, no I shouldn't say power wrong term torque is the force with which the the drive shaft if you like that little bit that's sticking out of the engine up there is turning at and speed obviously is the speed it's rotating at and those combined make up the power now the important part about this is that torque is the minimum required thing for machines to operate this little uh, thing that sticks out is going to go into the back of machines and without a certain amount of power, uh, sorry, oh, without a certain amount of torque, the machine won't work at all. And the speed, all that does is speed the actual operation up. So, you know, if you want 
all processing really fast, you'll want a really high speed at a minimum level of torque to make that particular machine work. Most of the time, you're not going to be storing up power uh, in some kind of, and I do mean power in this case, in any kind of uh, apparatus, but there is something called an industrial coil later that we'll get onto that, that does do that. Most of the time, though, you'll generally pay, generate power on site, and that even includes farming. So if you've seen my previous FTV monster series, you'll see in the farming that um, I have steam engines directly powering a fan, which sounds like a bit of a waste, you know, a fan in front of a steam engine. You think steam engine's pretty big. Um, which is, is blowing across the crops and, and allowing farming to take place. So we'll come back to that once we get to, to other uses. But to start off with, we have to kind of build some of the uh, some of the basic blocks. So that is a work table. So I need a crafting table, some stone bricks. <laughs> I've got two and I need three. And I don't have a furnace down here yet. We'll of course get to the furnace provided by Rotary Craft soon, but in the meantime I'll just need a few things from upstairs. So let's grab... Well, I only have one smooth stone. Guess so. <laughs> We're not making many of these. Uh, I do require some clay. I'm gonna need four of those and we may as well cook those up. Because we need four bricks and then to make, you know, the brick block. Redstone I already have downstairs, and a little bit of wood, which I can just borrow from here. There we go. Have to wait for that to cook up. And do I need anything else? Um, one slight problem with this mod pack is I can't middle click to actually resort all the inventory. So used to doing that, but hopefully on yours you will have that. I can never remember which mod does it. I'm sure someone in the comments will mention it, but uh, if not, don't worry about it. And I don't think I need anything else from up here. I think I've moved all the essential stuff downstairs. I'll just take some of some of this stuff and some of the cobblestone. So I can make uh, furnaces down there then. So, bricks. Let's make a brick block and let's pop downstairs to make the work table. Now, uh, the work table... Oh, well, the usual problem I have with the work table is purely that I forget whether some recipes are in a regular work table, or sorry, a regular crafting station, or you have to make them in the work table. Um, very often in this mod, they are in the work table, not the crafting station. So just bear that in mind. When you're actually doing this, I require some redstone. I just get one. And we have a work table. Okay, so let's have a look. What's the first engine we want to create? Uh, well, the first power source. It's probably going to be uh, the DC engine. This uh, is just a, yeah, it requires craft any machines. Some of the subcomponents though can be made in anything. Um, let's just look at this. So the DC, let's look at the engines. DC electric engine requires some HLSLA steel, we require the shaft unit and base panels. Okay. So let's just look at it in any eye because I can click through the recipes. Would be nice if that happened in the book, but uh, no, never mind. So shaft unit is three HSLA steel. Base panel is three HSLA steel. You see the idea why well, we're getting so many uh, iron that we're going to need? So what I'm going to do is going to take some of this iron. I'm going to go and cook it up in the smeltery and then come back. All right, so we've got some more steel being made. And you may think this is quite a lot for the start of the game. Not really. <laughs> it requires quite a lot. Uh, anyway, so if I just knock through through this section of wall, I uh, cleared it out a little bit earlier, we've got a regular furnace. Now, one of the early game um, improvements in most mods like this is to improve the furnace or, you know, get dusts and double ores. Now we've got the smeltery, of course, in this pack. You may or may not have Tinker's Construct in yours, but the smeltery with Rotary Craft is, well, sorry, Rotary Craft, you may want to use something else like the smeltery while you get going, because there's a few steps to get going that we may not get in this episode, but let's, let's start off. There's a couple of things we want to make, and one of them is the DC electric engine. Here it is. Quite simple. So the shaft units, three of those. Base panel, three of those. And then, you know, HSLA, st HSLA steel. The other thing is the frictional heater. Friction heater, sorry. 
and similarly, it's very simple to make. So I made them off camera just so you didn't have to wait. Here we are, here we are. And we can use these to demonstrate at least the, let me just put this on the floor actually, it's probably easier to see on the floor. Uh, easier to see the problems that we get with rotary craft that we have to solve as part of the way this works. So if I put the electric engine in there first, the red indicates where the power is going to, the green would indicate where it's coming from. In the case of a DC electric engine, uh, it's not coming from anywhere, it's just magic. <laughs> Powered by a lever, a lever. It makes this really annoying noise and it will shut down very, very shortly. Now, if you had a machine directly plugged into that, there'd be a hole in the back of the machine that you look for. And so you may think, well, friction heater, I wonder what this is for. Well, of course, furnaces, um, thank God the noise has stopped. Uh, you can turn that off in the configs, by the way, if you don't really like, if you really don't like it. Um, a furnace, the only point of this fuel slot is to heat up the furnace. So many mods have alternate ways of heating up furnaces. IC2 has like heat generators, uh, sorry, not, not heat generators, I think it's heat generators. You put them either side of the furnace anyway, and the iron furnace I should say, and it heats up. Um, Rotarycraft has a similar mechanic. In Rotarycraft, we use a friction heater. Now you may think, oh, I can just hook this up. There's a friction heater, there's where the power's coming from, and it's heading here. So this thing is going to rotate against the back, and away we go. The problem is, in rotary craft, as I was saying before, things require a minimum amount of power. So if I turn this on... Uh-oh, nothing's happening. Why? Well, if we have in the book... Oh, well, look in the... I don't need to think... We don't even need to look in the book. In the... Um, in NEI... Let's go over here for a second. If I hold down shift, it requires 8 kilowatts of power and 32 newton meters of torque. Okay, so 8 kilowatts, 32 newton meters. Doesn't say anything about speed, you don't have to worry about speed. You can operate really slowly if you want to. The DC electric engine, however, only provides 1 kilowatt of power and 4 newton meters of torque. Now, what I could do is put a gearbox in front of that, 8 to 1, or 1 to 8, let's figure which way around that is, and it will um, multiply the torque by 8 to get 32, but it will reduce the speed by, uh, divide the speed by 8 accordingly. Speed doesn't matter too much in this case. However, that's still not enough power. <laughs> so whether that will even work at, at all or even slightly, I don't know. That said, I don't think there's enough power for this. And gearboxes have one other disadvantage. They require lubricant, and we've not got that yet. Um, even the starting gearboxes, uh, stone, we want 8 to 1 gearbox. So even that requires a lot of wood, so I have to do that off camera. Uh, the top end gearbox, the bedrock one, doesn't require lubricant, but bedrock's quite a long way from where we are right now, so we'll have to come back to that one. So where do we get started with this whole thing then? If we can't craft the machines, we kind of need to... What's the whole point of this DC electric engine if it can't even, you know, heat up a furnace? Well, the point of it is that it will operate a different machine. And that machine is what we're going to be then using for other purposes. And that is the fermenter. There it is. So it's minimum power is 1,024, oh sorry, one kilowatt, and its minimum speed is 32 watts per second. Yep, so that will do. Uh, we can transform it, was it torque? Sorry, I need to look at that again, Mentor. Ah, okay, so this one is minimum speed. All right, uh, I correct myself then. <laughs> Some things do require minimum speed. Okay, so we need to create this recipe. So why don't we get started with that? Uh, we're going to require a few things, and this is where you start to use up a lot of HSLI steel. So an impeller is HSLI steel gear. So we're going to get three of those. And an impeller, one of those. 
and some base panels of which I already have some but I need some more and finally a fermenter and <laughs> remind me again what the requirements are uh, speed yes yeah. so this should be fine to go directly onto the DC electric engine uh, in fact let me just move the engine forward rather than that back There you go, the red's where it's going. And the slightly misaligned textures, that could be kind of my texture pack rather than anything else. I've got a slightly higher texture pack in this uh, particular mod pack. So let's grab you and prepare for the annoying noise. Uh, however, before I do that, we should look inside. So up at the top right, we have a control of what this actually creates. Um, that's more for automation, it says, but we'll come back to that. Uh, we need to, first of all, let's just look at the info on this. Uh, we need sugar and earth, if I remember rightly. So, uh, sugar, earth and water, I should say. So we've got some dirt, so that's fine. Sugar, that's why I brought the sugar canes down. And sorry if uh, I'm setting up a little bit bunged up. I am coming down with a cold, which is great moving into December. And why did I just pick paper? Oh well, I have plenty of books now. <laughs> I'm shucking up paper. There we go. Okay, so this is a two-stage process we need to go through. First of all, sugar and dirt. And we're going to need to get some clay. From upstairs and make another bucket and get uh, ideally an unlimited power source and of course it's night time great let me do that I'll come back on camera so uh, oh by the way I did turn on the mod that I did middle click sorting it was already installed I just had had to turn it on normally it's on by default so let's just clear out some room and which has made me much happier, by the way. I need to be able to middle click sort to see anything. Here we go. So we just grab some water, and uh, you were just quite. We should put the feed buckets into this thing. To make use, place two in the top slot, dirt in the bottom. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, yeah, redstone changes the target production item. That's fine. Middle guy slot is a water gauge on an item slot. Okay, so... Is that really... Do I have to feed it in by pipe? It's possible. It'd be annoying if it was. Let me check, because if so, I'll have to make some pipes. Okay, the wiki doesn't say either way, so let's assume that it does require water piped in. So we do need some uh, liquid pipe. So let's just get that made. We just need three glass. Zombies breaking in upstairs, probably. Um, three glass. And we just need, yet again, more steel. And this is liquid pipe. Assume that's the right kind. I can never remember, but that should do just okay. And we want a pump. Now, like mechanism, the pump is a little bit... And there's mechanism in this pack as well. That's the mechanism version. The pump requires a bit of care, um, to be fair. In the same way, in fact, let's just make it first. Uh, I need another impeller. It should be straightforward because I've already got those made. Pump. And do I have, I need some more base panels. Oh, yeah, I need a few more. Yeah. Let's just cook those up. So where was I? Yes, so the pumps need a bit of care. Um, that's why there's a 3x3 three three pool. Uh, just look at the mechanism tutorial. You can make a 3x1 or a 2x2 two two and stuff like that, but if you get even a little bit of lag, they will basically break uh, by consuming all of the water before it has a chance to replenish, and then you end up with an empty pool. 
And in the case of rotary craft, if you end up with an entry pool and you're feeding the water into something like a steam engine or uh, something without cooling fins or even with, that, with the cooling fins, the thing can explode with just lack of water. So just be very, very careful with that. Um, yeah, if <laughs> you don't want to run out of water. If necessary, even use other mods like extra utilities. Um, liquid transfer node, if it's in this mod pack. It's not in this mod pack. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, there, there it is. Transfer node liquids. Even consider this rather than a pump. But uh, because I'm demonstrating rotary craft, then I want a, uh, a rotary craft pump, at least to start with. So, yeah, let's just get this made now. That should be everything. Pump. Right. And... This, uh, where is the, yeah, it requires DC engine, hmm, <laughs> which is kind of annoying if I have to, yeah, so what I probably want to do is knock this block out, and then we want to attach water liquid pipe to the top, if I remember rightly, or is it the side, side, yeah. Get rid of that. And we'll go this way. I can into the top of the fermenter. Of course, nothing's happening right now. I think I need another DC electric engine. Again, we're going to be using quite a lot of seal in this first episode. I need a couple more of the redstone and... Another one of these. And that should be done. I'm going to need another lever, so let's just grab some more sticks. And a piece of cobblestone. And we've got the lever. Again, this is going to be noisy, so I'm probably going to turn these off in the config. And there we go. Water is pumping out. It's coming into the fermenter, and then we can use another lever, if I grab another stick. That is really annoying me. <laughs> I'm going to have to sort that out in the config. Uh, yeah, another lever. And I then should be able to use this to control what I get out of this. Uh, at the moment, its target is... Uh, let's just flip this over. Yeah. Oh, wow. Can I even sort that right now? So, yeah, the first idea is we're going to go for uh, yeast first, I think, and we get sludge out of it. One of the two, we're going to wait till that's finished. I'm going to wait till it does on camera. I think it's... Uh, actually, I need to flip it back uh, for it to continue. This would go faster, of course, if I had more, uh, more speed, but I've only got the basic engines to start with. We will, of course, replace that as time goes on. And uh, what we're going to get out of this is yeast if I've got the thing, this thing flipped the right way around. We then put it th right back through again, we put the yeast in the top slot, some plant matter in the bottom, again still with water, and we get ethanol crystals. Ethanol crystals are going to go straight into the furnace, and we're going to get, um, sorry, uh, the sludge, sorry, goes into the furnace, and we get ethanol crystals out, which we can then make ethanol with, which then powers our higher tier engines or helps to power our higher tier engines we need to process things further on so i know this has been a starting episode there's been a lot to absorb and the zombies are coming in um next episode we are going to get to some of those other engines i want to demonstrate just the basic processes and we're going to carry on with that and we're going to get a lot more used to other things next episode. In particular, we're going to head for, and the main reason to do all of this stuff is to get to lubricant eventually, as well as ethanol. Um, and lubricant will let us use gearboxes, and then we can start really piling up the machines to do whatever we want with them, really. So I hope to see you in that next episode. Um, this has been a quick first one, and uh, you know I'll do these episodes in between the regular series that I normally do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in episode two.